All right, so in this video, I want to quickly cover how much difference there is between a web app and a user form. So I very often get these questions like, how do I do this? And I will refer the person to a video I did and they will be like, well, that's a user form. I wanted a web app. So how much difference is there between having a user form and having a web app? So if you look at this application and here I have the spreadsheets where I have, well, one of them is the data. And the second one is another spreadsheet that has the user form. So right now I can basically, if you look at this combination, fruits, apples, red, see the last line here is 31. So let's go and add something to this. So I'm gonna go ahead and add like 12 more. I'm gonna click add to database. And right now, if we go back and check this out, we should have that in our database. So basically we can run this to add some records to that database. It reads the quantity on hand, whatever. It does all these things, right? It's a user form. So if I open the script for this, in the script, we have this code.js, which has nothing in it. I have this uform HTML, which is HTML with all the JavaScript. I'm not gonna touch any of this. I have this functs.js, which is all the backend functions to add rows, read some arrays, and things like that. And finally, I have this load user form.js that has these three functions. One of them basically creates a menu, and that menu is created when we open the spreadsheet. And then finally, when that menu opens up right here, see, when we run this, it basically loads this sidebar, which is where we run this function load form to load the sidebar. So these three functions is what makes this a user form. Basically, we load it internally inside of our spreadsheet. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna convert this to a web app. For that, I'm just gonna comment all of these three functions and go back in here and create a function for a web app. And every web app should have a function do get, and this should return an HTML service. So very similar to how I have this that gets the HTML, evaluates it. I'm just gonna pretty much copy those two lines. And we have this that basically just creates an HTML service from this uform HTML file. We have this that evaluates that to create HTML. And finally, we need to just return that HTML. So for a web app, we don't need to really save this now in a variable. We can simply just return it. So with these changes of me just removing all of these and replacing them with this do get function, I'm gonna save this and publish this as a web app. So deploy as web app. And here we'll give this some description and execute the app as me, that's good. And who has access? I'm gonna do public. So I'm gonna go ahead and deploy this. So that gives us this link. So if I go ahead and open that link, See that loaded that same thing. It's gonna look a little weird because now we have like bunch of space compared to what we had before. But here it's basically the same thing loaded in this URL for our web app. So what I can do again, this should be all tied up to this. As an example, let's go to this inventory and check one of these. Veggies, onions, one type should be 179 in stock. So I'm gonna go to this, veggies, onions, one type. So it loads the same way, it's connected to the same spreadsheet. I can go here and add some new quantity, 21 of those. Just to refresh your memory, the last line in this results is this, fruits, apples, red, and line 32. So I'm gonna go back to this and basically just again select some date. These are not required, so I'm just gonna skip those. But again, all of these works the same way it would have worked in a web app. And if you're interested how to build this, user form level two, you can watch that. But I'm just gonna click on add to database. Successfully added, it updated the quantity 200. If I go back to this, there it is. 
So just like that, I have a web app from the user form. See how much changes that was? Very little to no existent. I should be able to also uncomment this and save it. And now I should have access to my web app, which I should probably redeploy now because I made some changes, even though it doesn't matter, but just to show you this. So update it. If I go back and reload this, See, it still works the same way. Updates the quantity on hand for this. 242 apparently, if I go here, 242. And now I should also be able to, if I reload the spreadsheet, open that as a sidebar too. So now I have both. The same code works as a user form like this on the side and as a web app completely separate. So the main thing, the concern here is not how much difference there is because web app and user form are pretty much practically the same thing in many regards. What you should be concerned about, however, is that when you make something a web app and publish it the way I just did as a public setting. So if I go under script editor, see under publish, when I do deploy, I chose to do public. Now you could do only myself, then it would not be a concern at all. So you would be fine. But once you make it public, this is accessible pretty much to anybody who has the link for this URL. And you have to think through what are some possible things that somebody gets access to this, what they could probably enter in one of these fields to kind of mess up your backend or get some information from your backend that they should not be getting. So these are the type of things you should be concerned about, but application wise, they work the same way. And that should do it for this video. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe and I'll see you in the next one.